Welcome into Woodbury Lutheran Church and our online campus here at live.woodburylutheran.org. Well, it is beginning to look a lot like Christmas, and honestly, it's hard to find something much taller than me, but I think this tree uh, is a good example of something like that. And wait until you see our sermon bumper later on in the service. I think the ornament fell from this tree with how long it takes to fall to the ground. Now, I got to say, if you've been worshiping with us here for a long time and you've been here online with us for quite a while, one of the things that would be really weird for me if I came to church for a long time was if I had to fill out a name tag every time I walked in the door. Well, maybe you felt the same way about filling your name out every time you go to use that chat function as we worship here uh, online. So maybe you want to take the next step, take it further with us and click that little hamburger button that you see at the top of your screen. If you click that button, you can actually make an account at live.woodburylutheran.org, which just allows you to get into worship with us and to allows you to be able to jump into the chat and use the other functions of worship without having to fill out that name tag, without having to announce exactly who you are and what you've been doing because you've been here for a long time with us now. We've been worshiping like this for a while now. But if that's not you, if it's your first time that you're here with us, if you're a guest that's just visiting for the first time or maybe watching with somebody that you know who's been here for a while, we'd love to get to know you more as well. You can do that by clicking the connect with us button that you see right there on your screen. Connect with us so that we can get to know you and you can get to know us and hopefully you'll be one of those people who continues to come back to worship with us here, to experience the gospel truth here at Woodbury Lutheran, uh, live.woodburylutheran.org. Speaking of that, the, the chat screen, there's a lot of different stuff that you're able to do right here uh, with us as we worship online. One of the things that's the easiest thing to do, in my opinion, is actually inviting someone to worship with you. You can click a link that the service host will put into the chat right now and invite somebody to join with you in worship, to be able to experience this worship experience with you and be able to talk uh, with them about it, which is something I think we all need here uh, as we continue on in 2020. Some of the other features that are gonna be in the chat function as well, the service host will put in at the appropriate time. But if you wanna request some prayer, if you have something that's on your heart that you want to request, you can click on that request prayer button. You can find information about how to give to Woodbury Lutheran as well. Uh, all of that is right there in front of you. Click of a button away at live.woodburylutheran.org. But with all that instruction, everything that we've gone through and talked about, I'm excited to actually get into it and start worshiping. Our online service starts right now.
I play for you, pum 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 pum, on my drum. Wow. Well, I'm not exactly a musician, but that rendition of The Little Drummer Boy was so sweet. Welcome in to worship here at Woodbury Lutheran Church and our online campus at live.woodburylutheran.org. We're super excited that you're here with us as we continue on in Advent, as we look forward to the coming of Christ as a baby in the manger in Bethlehem, uh, and as we continue on with our ser- sermon series during Advent called Christmas. And today we're talking about this, the theme of anything but Mary. Not M-A-R-Y, but M-E-R-R-Y. And so you'll have to stick around for Pastor Tom's sermon later to see what we're talking about as well. But we're talking about the Prince of Peace today, and as we make our beginning, we make our beginning in the name of that Prince of Peace, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our first reading today comes from Romans chapter 12. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by challenging the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning— Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now as we continue our worship today, let's join together in song.
Every time I hear that song, Of the Father's Love Begotten, I think back to when I was in high school. We always started our Christmas choir concert that way. Uh, and so it just gets me excited and ready for Christmas, which is great because Christmas is just a couple days away. And I know it's been a crazy year and there's a lot of different things going on in the world right now, but we believe, and I hope you believe too, that it's possible to have a stable Christmas this year. Uh, whether you watch on demand or you watch with some other people right here at live.woodburylutheran.org or even if you're in the Twin Cities area and you're interested in coming to Christmas worship in person, I want to invite you to go to stablechristmas.com. That is stablechristmas.com. We have a very special online Christmas worship service this year that I hope that you take part in, even if you do come in person. Uh, invite your friends to watch that. You can also, though, if you're coming in person, RSVP for any of our in-person worship services at our Valley Creek or Oak Hill campuses. You need to RSVP for Christmas Eve worship, so don't forget to do that. Again, everything can be found at stablechristmas.com. And then don't miss the very next day on Christmas morning, we are having an online-only worship service at 10 a.m. It's a special Stable Christmas Perspectives uh, that you won't want to miss as well. Even the sheep make an appearance, uh, which is pretty cool. So don't miss that. Uh, and as we're going through Christmas week, uh, we have a big goal set before us uh, as we value compassionate care as a congregation. Maybe you know this, maybe you've heard the announcement in weeks past, but there are 79 million people in the United States that struggle with the load of medical debt. This Christmas, Woodbury Lutheran is partnering, along with other churches, with a group called RIP Medical Debt, R-I-P Medical Debt, uh, that purchases second market medical debt. Uh, in a way that for every dollar RIP medical debt raises, they can pay off nearly $100 of somebody's medical debt. Think about that. That's completely rewriting someone's future story. Uh, and we get to be a part of that. This Christmas, we have the goal of raising $25,000 to be able to donate to RIP medical debt, paying off over $2 million of people's medical debt uh, in our country. At a time where there's disunity, uh, we get to speak unity into our country. There's a time or when there's chaos and instability all over in our world. This gets to breathe stability into people's lives. And I want you to see the impact that RIP Medical Debt has had on some people's lives. You can see the testimony from two people on the screen. One says, I'm a single parent raising my son with special needs. Life has hit us with some hard blows, mentally, spiritually, financially, opening your letter to find that my medical debt has been paid in full, I will never forget you have truly blessed our lives with your generosity, compassion, and love. And then another person shares, I would like to express my gratitude to your organization. I was going through the worst year of my life when this letter showed up. I found a little hope through the darkness. This act of kindness has given me strength and raised me up. Thank you. 
What incredible testimonies of people's response to the generosity of RIP Medical Debt. We get to be a part of that this Christmas. Uh, And again, it's all through our value of compassionate care, bringing hope to the hurting. This is how God uses our generosity. God uses our generosity to shape and change our hearts and lives, but also uses it to impact people all around us. Uh, And so I want to invite you now, as we receive our offerings, to step into that generosity, responding to the love of Jesus. There are multiple different ways that you can give. You can give online. You can give by text, again, pointing your camera from your phone or tablet at the screen. Right now, there's a QR code that can connect you with that. Or you can mail your check to the Valley Creek offices at 7380 Afton Road, Woodbury, Minnesota, 55125. We receive our offerings at this time. Please pray with me. Almighty God, we thank you that you are the source of our hope. You're the source of our comfort and our reassurance. 
trusting your faithfulness and your promises in your word that you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. God, we pray that we would deepen in that joy, that we would find our hope in your word, in your faithfulness, in the midst of crisis, in the midst of uncertainty. And so, Almighty God, we pray that you deepen in us faith, deepen in us trust, and out of this trust, Lord God, we would display to the world around us your goodness, your power, your authority, your intervention in this world. Father, we pray that your church would display this love and show the world that forgiveness and mercy and kindness and grace and restoration are possible. Only by the power of the Holy Spirit, God. Only by your intervention, God. But we know that that is possible. And so, as we enter into this week of Christmas, as we enter into this time of celebration, Lord, we know that many, many have anxiety. Many are suffering from loneliness and isolation. And so we pray, Lord God, that your promises through your church, through your people, would reach into the lives, into the homes of those struggling. That they would be reminded of your love, that you see them, that you're faithful to them. Father, I also ask that your church would display what it looks like to restore relationships. In the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of anger and violence that we see in our nation and around the world, God, we pray that forgiveness and kindness and hope that has been given to us through Jesus would be displayed in our lives to the world around us. And Father, as, as many this week are traveling, we pray protection, provision in every way, Lord God. And that our celebration would be of the coming of salvation. The coming of your grace in Jesus. Stir in us, God, a longing for your return as well. And that as we wait, Lord God, we would display your love. Unite us, God, as we pray together the prayer that you, Jesus, taught your disciples our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Today we're continuing in our Crisis Miss series as we are looking at Mary and this great response that she has called the Magnificat. Uh, Kids, if you're up through about fifth grade, we have our Kids Link time for you now. You can grab your device and direct that, point it at the screen, at the QR code, and that will get you to where you need to go to have a great teaching that is appropriate for you. And the rest of you, you're going to stay here Again, as we spend some time looking at the Magnificat, uh, you can find it in Luke chapter 1, and it starts at verse 46. Just to put it into some context, uh, Mary has found out that she's pregnant. She's gone to visit her relative Elizabeth, and now she's responding with joy and thanksgiving. And if you're with us last weekend, you might remember that this isn't exactly how it started out for Mary. She was filled with fear. She was disturbed, and now we've seen this great transformation uh, in her life. And so here's the, the song of praise from Mary. Mary responded, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord, how my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he took notice of his lowly servant girl, and from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One is holy, and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and haughty ones. He has brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful. For he made this promise to our ancestors to Abraham and his children forever. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let's pray. Father, thanks uh, for this time that we have to uh, focus on Mary. And as we think about this time in our lives and in this world where, where it seems to be anything but Mary, she shows us the path to a good attitude. And it's rooted in something that's authentic and real. It's not something that she just conjures up in her own strength and power, but you give it to her. And so I'm asking you, Jesus, to break more and more into our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit that we too could respond in the midst of crisis like Mary with an attitude that rejoices and is enthusiastic about all that you have done for us. May your story, God, overshadow each and every crisis that we face. We pray this to your honor, Jesus. Amen. Well, some of you are familiar with the Strengths Finder. And this is an assessment that helps to show you uh, where you're strong and where you have some growth to do in certain different uh, characteristics. It measures 34 of these characteristics. And I I really think this is important because it's a self-reflection tool. It helps you to say, hey, I'm really good over here, but I've got some challenges here. And it's very helpful in a team setting because it it helps you to better understand why people act uh, the way they do. Now, if you know me at all, which lots of you do, you're probably not going to be surprised, and I think I've shared this before, uh, that one of my top strengths is being positive. It's positivity. Now, this doesn't mean I always have a good attitude. You can ask the church staff that, or you can ask my wife that. Sometimes I have a very bad attitude. And this this strength of positivity, it comes with some blind spots that I have to be aware of. Uh, But at the end of the day, it's great because it helps me to see the good, even in very difficult circumstances and even with very difficult people. And I've been told that sometimes this, this gift of positivity can actually be annoying. Uh, Do you know that over-enthusiastic person that I'm talking about? Maybe you've got that coming to your mind right now. Uh, Check this out. Say, uh, are you okay? You seem kind of quiet. No, I'm fine. I'm great. I'm with you. And I'm with you. What a great time to be alive. Look at this plate bouncy thing. What an inspired solution to man's plate dispensing problems. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. Ah, oysters. Let me feed you one. Oh, that's not necessary. Please. No, actually, I don't, I don't eat. I won't quit until you try one. Okay, fine, fine. Mm-hmm. What are they like? I've never had one. 
Why don't you just try one? Nah, they look too weird. <laughs> Annoying positivity. You know exactly who I'm talking about, what I'm talking about. Sometimes when that person is just fake or so full of positivity, you just say, that can't be real, or where does that come from? And as uh, positive as I am, there is one area in my life where I am not very positive, and it has to do with my beloved Minnesota Vikings. Uh, This last weekend was another reminder why I am so annoyed by people who are positive about their chances. You see, it's been 44 years since they've been in the Super Bowl. And I just happened to be in my mother's womb at that time. And I was not jumping for joy because they lost that Super Bowl like they've lost every other Super Bowl. And back in in 2003, my then uh, girlfriend, soon-to-be wife, Stephanie, was just learning what it was like to become a Minnesota Viking fan. Uh, The Vikings were 9-6, and and they were playing the 3-12 and Arizona Cardinals. And all they had to do to get into the playoffs was beat the lowly Cardinals. And for most of the game, things were going well. In fact, with two minutes left in the game, the Vikings were ahead 17-6. to By all accounts, an insurmountable lead. But you don't know these Vikings. And over the next two minutes, they would give this lead away and they would actually end up losing the game 18 to 17. And while it was all unraveling, I was kind of just sitting there chuckling just because it was so unbelievable. Like, this can't possibly be happening again. And Stephanie, poor Stephanie, is breaking down as she's getting this first experience of what it's like to be a Vikings fan. And so I had to explain to her, if you want to end the relationship, this is the right time to do it because otherwise you're stuck with this team for the rest of your life. This is why... I get so annoyed by anyone that is positive around the Vikings. Now, to be truthful, that probably says more about me and my own issues than it says about the person who's being positive. And it's not that I want to be negative. It's not that I I don't want to believe that they're going to do good. I just can't get myself to do it. And the truth is, when we feel bad, don't we want others to suffer with us. It's no fun being the only one who feels bad. There's that old saying that misery loves company. And I think even when we're at this point, when we've got a bad attitude, when we feel bad, when we're feeling sorry for ourselves, or maybe there's a real crisis that has given us real reason to feel down, there's always something inside of us saying, you know what, I want to move past this. But I also want it to be real. I want it to be authentic. I don't want it to be like over, over enthusiastic guy that we just watched the clip of. And so we wonder, is it even possible to have a good attitude and more than just with a football team, but in the midst of crisis, when life is anything, anything but merry? And that's what we've been talking about in this series, Crisismas. As we've looked back at 2020, it's one crisis after another. And so how can we possibly have a positive attitude and be authentic and real about it? And so as we look back at that first Christmas account, all around it we see crisis. Uh, two weeks ago, we, we explored the life of Elizabeth and Zechariah and how they had a lifelong crisis of not having a child. And what we learned is that in the midst of crisis, we won't always get the answer as to why God allows it, but we do know that he promises to hear our prayer. And, and last week, Mary got the news that she was pregnant, yay, except she's not married and she's a young woman in a Jewish culture. And so crisis can bring about great fear, and yet in the midst of that crisis, God's promises still reign supreme. And today, Mary, out of crisis, responds with this great song of praise. It's a positive, enthusiastic attitude that actually draws us closer and closer to her because we know it's real. It's authentic. It's born out of crisis. 
And so I want to spend our time today exploring how she got to that place and how maybe we can get there too in the midst of crisis in our own lives. When, when crisis comes, though, it, it lies to us. It tells us that there is no hope. Crisis tells us there's no bigger picture going on. Crisis gives us tunnel vision into the problems that we are facing in our own lives. And when crisis comes, it's no fun. It can leave us filled with fear. It can leave us frustrated and angry. But when crisis comes, we are anything but merry. And 2020 has been, been doing that to Americans. Uh, every November, Gallup takes a poll about American mental health. And this year, the headline read something like, Americans' mental health reaches new lows. The crisis of 2020 is telling us that there's no hope. And it's impacting our attitudes and it's impacting our mental health in dangerous, dangerous ways. As we look at Mary, she found herself in this place of crisis. And as Pastor John shared with us last week, in the midst of that crisis, her first step to having a right attitude, a good attitude, was to to step in to curiosity, was to lean into her doubt. Not put up a wall, but lean into her doubt because when that angel showed up, she didn't immediately go to the Magnificat. Instead, she was confused and disturbed. Angel, what what can you possibly mean? I'm pregnant? How how can that even happen? I'm I'm not even married. I'm, I'm a virgin. This is impossible. And in the midst of that impossible in the midst of her fear, in the midst of being confused and disturbed, Mary ran to God with her questions. Mary went back to that angel and said, how how can this be? And she went through a a process of of making her way through her her emotions and her, her fears and her doubts. And so if if what if what if we responded the same way to, to crisis? Instead of running away from God, what if we ran to God in our curiosity, in our our doubt, and in our fear? And so she she goes to God and she's she's confused and she's disturbed by all that she's experiencing, but then she says, I am a servant of the Lord. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to lean into my curiosity about what is is happening. I'm not going to run away from you. And so the the first step to having the right attitude, a good attitude, is just being open with how you're feeling toward God and not trying to shove it all away, not trying to hide it. And if you're afraid, let God know that you're afraid. If you have doubts, let them know your doubts. If you have have questions, let them know your questions. But remember that you are a servant of the Lord and that God is good and God is faithful. And it's out of that moment of curiosity that God moves in Mary's life to go and visit her relative Elizabeth. Now, we know from a couple weeks ago that Elizabeth is now pregnant. And she is pregnant with John the Baptist. And something so cool happens when Mary shows up at her doorstep and she greets Elizabeth immediately. The child, the child in Elizabeth's womb jumps for joy because he has come into the presence of his Lord. And even that little child, the Holy Spirit, is working within the womb of Elizabeth to to praise God in his very presence. And Elizabeth says these words to Mary, God has blessed you above all women, and your child is blessed. Why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? See, one of the things we learn about having a right attitude is the importance of community. And so it's out of this community that Elizabeth reminds Mary of of who she is 
and her purpose. She reminds her of the bigger picture that, that sure, there's a crisis going on here. You're not married and you're, you're young and people are going to wonder and how does this all work? But, but the bigger picture here is that you are carrying the Lord. And don't we all need people to remind us of the bigger picture and encourage us? I know this crisis is hard. I know you've lost your job. I know your kids are running around like like crazy people. I I know you're wondering how you're going to make it to next week. But remember that God is good and God is faithful. God is with you. Because left on our own, we tend to forget those things so quickly. And we see this all throughout Mary's life. All the way up to the cross. As Jesus is hanging on the cross, I I so appreciate that. There's Mary, and there's John, and there's others gathered around. And Jesus from the cross, he looks down at his mother, and he points to the disciple John, and he says, he will be your son. And then he points to his mother, and he says to John, she will be your mother. Now, more than ever, we need the power of community in our lives. We need to be walking with other disciples of Jesus in authentic relationships where we don't have to act like we have it all together, where we don't have to act like we have all the answers, where we don't have to act like we're perfect, but where we can do this following Jesus thing with one another. I love these words from Paul in Galatians 6. Share each other's burdens. There's two sides to this, right? One is we have to be willing to be vulnerable to share what is burdening us. And then secondly, we have to be willing not to judge one another, but instead to walk with each other and to carry these burdens, to share them. Around here we talk about how life is better together, that we value relationships. And it's no wonder that we're constantly lifting up the value of of being in a small group, of having a Stephen minister, someone that can walk with you through a hard time. Because that's how we get through crisis. We get through crisis together. And we can come out on the other side of it with a good attitude that is real and authentic, not manufactured and fake. I referenced earlier uh, the Gallup study. And in that, that Gallup study, it breaks people down into different groups. And in every group of people, Democrat, Republican, young and old, the mental health that they report is worse in 2020 than in 2019. With one exception. And the exception is this. Those who attend a weekly religious service, report a 4% positive increase in mental health. Now, I'm not saying that church is some kind of a magic formula to come and to feel better and to take away your depression and anxiety. But all this evidence does is corroborate what the scriptures teach to us about the importance of gathering together in community. Because when we gather in community with other followers of Jesus, we are transformed by the the words of Jesus, the truth of Jesus, his grace and forgiveness, the challenge around being repentant over our sins. All of that works something in our lives to make us body and soul more and more healthy. And so we see this this power of community in the lives of Mary and Elizabeth as Mary receives the encouragement from Elizabeth and she responds with these incredible words of the Magnificat. Now the Magnificat I think is, is so beautiful uh, because it's, it's so real. It's authentic. You know, it's not over-enthusiastic guy. It's, it's not somebody you roll your eyes at because we know what Mary has just experienced. She's just experienced the, the fear and the disturbance 
I'm being told she's, she's pregnant. And yet we see how God is, is working in all of that. And as she comes to the Magnificat, there are two words that stand out to me. And the two words are, he has. Because Mary shows us that we get a right attitude when we focus not on ourselves and our own crisis, but when we focus on who God is. And so throughout the Magnificat, she praises God for all that he has done. His mighty arm has brought us out of captivity. He's scattered the proud and the haughty ones. He has brought down princes from their thrones. He has filled the hungry. He has, he has, he has. And so the, the key to, to a right attitude, a good attitude, is focusing not on ourselves and our own problems, but it's focusing on God and how great he is. And she concludes with this last, he has. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful For he made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. This promise. What what is this promise that God made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever? This promise is that one day God would do something about our sin problem. That he would step into the mess of our lives, the crisis of this world, the crisis that sin has brought into the world and into our lives. And he would do something about it by taking on flesh and living among us. That at just the right time, he would take on flesh and be born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those under the law. That's the promise that Mary knew was for her. That God was merciful. That he was coming through on this promise to send a Messiah. And it's this promise that that moved Mary from being confused and disturbed to saying, you know what? I'm praising God with all that I am. Because he has made me a lowly servant girl to be a part of his story. And guess what? This promise, this promise is for you. No matter what crisis you're facing in your life right now, no matter what you have done to not deserve to be a part of the promise, no matter how big your doubts are and how far you feel from God right now, No matter how bad your attitude is, this promise is for you. This promise that that Jesus fulfilled as he went to the cross. This promise that shows that God remembered to be merciful. This promise fulfilled as Jesus burst through the tomb. This promise that brings you forgiveness. This promise that brings you life. This promise that says that you, yes, lowly you, are a part of God's story. And that's what brings about shift and change in transformation. That's what allows us in the worst of crisis to recognize, you know what? God's story is so much bigger than the crisis I'm dealing with right now. And so as we look at Mary, what we see is this. That our right attitude comes by seeking God. In curiosity. Where you can be real with God about your doubts and your fears. That it comes seeking God in community by doing it with other disciples of Jesus. That we don't find this attitude in isolation on our own. But we need others to encourage us. We need others to challenge us. We need others to remind us of who God is. Finally, a right attitude comes by seeking God in his story. Don't start with you. Start with him. Don't start with you. Start with him. And so as as Christmas is just around the corner, I want to give you a homework assignment this week. 
and hopefully you'll find it helpful. And, and the homework is this. Uh, sit down with the Magnificat and read it a whole bunch of times. Uh, circle words that stick out to you. Underline a phrase that, that speaks to your heart. And then what I'm asking you to do is to write your own Magnificat. How would you express it in your own words? Share it with your, your family members or share it with a friend. Share it in your small groups. Heck, I would like to receive a few of these. What, what does the Magnificat look like in your own life? Can we have a right attitude when life is anything but Mary? Mary shows us that the answer is yes. And it's not a fake enthusiasm that repels people, but it's real because it's rooted not only in our experience but it's rooted in what God has done for us in his son Jesus. And so this Christmas, I'm praying that all of us can have a right attitude that doesn't repel others, but attracts them. Because it's all about what Jesus has done for us. Let's pray. Uh, Father, as we look At your faithful servant, Mary, it can be intimidating because she seems to have it all together in the midst of a terrible crisis. And yet we know that it was a process for her. And in the midst of that process, she just got busy trusting you and being curious with her own feelings and doubts. And she went to others and she received encouragement from another one of your followers. And then she went to your story and she was reminded that you are good and you are faithful. And so transform our attitudes this year. Not by our own power, not by our own strength. But by your Holy Spirit. That others would see you living in us and give you glory. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Children weep no more Hope is on the horizon Weary world behold Your promised Messiah Angels let your song begin
dawn of salvation. Darkness reigns no more, for Jesus is Thanks, Pastor Tom, for sharing that message with us. I want to invite you to embrace that invitation. Think about being curious about the things of God, the importance of connecting with the community of God and seeing yourself as part of God's story, really leaning into worship and praise of God this Christmas season. I also want to invite you to take that message deeper this week. Our service host will post a link to our scripture card in the chat. You can click on that link to dive deeper with prayer prompts, different questions you can wrestle with on the passage of scripture that Pastor Tom preached on today. Uh, Also on this Sunday, December 20th, if you're watching on Sunday or if you're watching right before Sunday, in the afternoon from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m., uh, it's the most 2020 thing ever. We're having a drive-by farewell for myself and my wife, Cassie. Many of you have heard uh, that I accepted a call to be the pastor at Trinity First Lutheran School in Minneapolis. Uh, next weekend is going to be my final weekend here at Woodbury Lutheran. Uh, and so I want to be able to say goodbye to you all in a safe way. And so I hope if you're in the area, you'll stop by the Valley Creek Campus roundabout uh, right there as you pull in to say goodbye Uh, to wish us well and to let us say goodbye to you and wish you well uh, as well. I hope that you will be able to join us for that. Uh, Also, next Sunday, we already talked about Christmas worship. Don't forget stablechristmas.com for all of that online and in person. But next weekend's worship on Sunday, December 27th is online only. And so if you're a person that is just watching online this week or you were thinking about maybe checking us out in person, you got to wait another week for that. We're going to be online only on Sunday, December 27th. Uh, As you prepare Uh, to live out your lives, whether it be at work or at school, conversations with friends or family, whatever God is up to in your life this week, I pray that you would notice it. Go with the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord, look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. See you next week.
unexpected would you believe after all we've projected a child in our 